Section 4.3, Acids, Bases, and Neutralization Reactions. So let's start with talking about acids. An acid is a substance that's able to ionize in an aqueous solution to form uh, protons. And if you remember, dissociates when you had an ionic compound that when you put it in water breaks apart into ions. Ionize is when you have a neutral compound, not uh, an ionic uh, compound, but a molecular compound that also breaks apart into ions. So an acid is one of these. It, it ionizes. So if you were to have something like HCl, that hydrogen is a nonmetal, chlorine is a nonmetal. So these are these are covalently bonded. These are sharing electrons. They're not ions at all. But when you put them in water, there are a few of these acids that will completely break apart into ions. And this is called ionization. So if you were to have um, if you were to have this guy, it would break apart into H plus and Cl minus inside. Now this is called um, this is called a hydrogen cation, but it's also called a proton. So that's a proton. A proton, remember, is a positively charged uh, subatomic particle inside the nucleus because there's protons, neutrons, and electrons. But hydrogen has no neutrons. And if you steal its electron away, then the only thing that's left is a proton. So uh, the inside of a hydrogen atom is a proton, and that's all. Okay, so a proton is a positive charge. So if you have an acid that can give one proton, then this is called a monoprotic. Protic is from proton, mono means one, monoprotic acid. If you have uh, something like this, H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, this is a diprotic acid. And if you have something like H3PO4, which is phosphoric acid, this is called a triprotic acid acid, and anything bigger than one is called poly. So polyprotic means it has more than one uh, hydrogen to give. So a hydrogen donor would be an acid. So, a so donates a proton. So the opposite of an acid is a base. So a base would be a um, proton acceptor. So if it takes a proton on itself, like donating it means gives it to something else, a base accepts it, uh, that would be a proton acceptor. Um, and a lot of bases are um, hydroxides. So you could have something like potassium hydroxide or sodium hydroxide. A lot of group one or group two hydroxides are, uh, are bases. But we'll find out later that you don't have to be a hydroxide to be a base. There's other, uh, there's other molecules that can receive a proton. As long as it can receive a proton, it acts as a base. So another example would be ammonia. NH3 can receive a, ba uh, can receive a proton and become um, ammonium which, remember, is our polyatomic cation, NH4. So, in the 1880s, um, a Swedish um, chemist started realizing that lots of these chemical reactions that they were studying were similar, and that his, his prediction were that it had to do with hydrogen transfer or proton transfer, so he defined an acid. This was called Arrhenius. Asfete, I think was his name, Arrhenius. And he uh, defined an acid as anything that would increase the concentration of H+. He didn't really call it a proton. There wasn't that idea then. then but but a, hydrogen, uh, a hydrogen ion in the water. So if, if that concentration went up, it must have been an acid because it came from that acid and then it rose the concentration. Two chemists, a Danish chemist and a British chemist, 
um, Danish chemist Bronsted and uh, British chemist Lowry in the 19, I think it was 1920s, they, they had a different idea. They said, well, Arrhenius is correct. There's nothing wrong with what he said, but he's, he's not going far enough. It's not as broad, uh, is broader than what he thinks. Instead of just raising the concentration of hydrogen, it's donating, okay? So this is, uh, Rainius said that it increases the concentration of H+. Well, Bronsted and Lowry said that it's a, pro it's a proton donor. It's donating a proton to another species. A base remembers the opposite. Arrhenius defined, uh, defined it as anything that would increase the concentration of OH because lots and lots of bases are hydroxides, and this was the first that was studied, and so he said, well, if it's, a, if it's got OHs in it, it must be a base. And um, all of the really strong bases are hydroxides, but like we saw with ammonia, you could have other non-hydroxides that can receive a proton. Bronsted and Lowry are, of course, expanding this definition of Arrhenius's and said that it's a proton acceptor. So uh, acid is a proton donor. A base is a proton acceptor. An acid increases the amount of, of H+. Plus. A base increases the amount of OH-. minus. Now, we've already seen strong or weak when we came when we did electrolytes. Strong electrolytes completely break apart or dissociate in water. Weak electrolytes don't completely break apart. They only partially break apart. This is exactly the same when you have an acid. When you have an acid, you have a, you have a complete ionization. When you have a base, you have a complete ionization if it's strong. Okay, so, com so strong is complete ionization, weak is incomplete ionization. So it's not whether it's more corrosive or more powerful. Strong doesn't mean potent. It just means completely breaks, breaks apart. And I suppose it does mean potent in some ways. If it completely breaks apart, then there's more H's to donate. If it doesn't completely break apart, then some of those H's are still bound in their molecules and not usable. So it's, it's, it's basically both. So if you'll look here a second, you've got... Um, hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, so hydrogens plus chlorine, bromine, and iodine, those are from group 7. Chloric and perchloric, so ClO3 chloric, ClO4 perchloric, those acids are strong. Nitric acid, nitrate plus hydrogen, is strong. Sulfate plus hydrogen, so sulfuric acid, is strong, the first one. The, remember, this is a diprotic, um, diprotic, that was weird, diprotic acid, so there's more than one proton. The first one is strong. It completely dissociates. The strong bases are the group one metal hydroxides, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and the heavy group two hydroxides which are the ones a little bit, not lithium, but the ones uh, are um, not beryllium, but further down, calcium, strontium, barium. This is a review when we were studying how you name acids. You name them based upon their, uh, their anion. So if you have, in this case, perchlorate, add a hydrogen, it's perchloric acid. If you have sulfate, so eight goes to ic, um, eight goes to us, and the strong acids, um, the strong acids uh, are strong electrolytes. They completely dissociate. Weak acids are weak electrolytes. They don't dissociate total. So this ties together the idea of strong and weak in acids and also electrolytes. So a strong acid is also a strong electrolyte because it completely makes ions, just like we saw with other electrolytes. So a reaction with an acid and a base, uh, a lot of times acids are, are shown in red and bases in blue, you, end up, you have a transfer of a proton from the acid to the base in the reactants, and then you end up with something, and the, then you know, the, the original acid is no longer, doesn't have anything to give because it's, it's already given. 
If you have an acid and a base, it's called a neutralization reaction. It neutralizes. Acidic uh, acids and bases have certain pH numbers that when they come together can actually neutralize. So neutral meaning like a pH of 7, water is a pH of 7. So strong acid, something like a pH of, of 1, and we'll talk about pH in a section in a, uh, a few days. pH of 0, pH of 1 is very, very acidic. pH of 13, 14, very, very basic. If you put a 1 and a 14 together, you can get a 7, which is the same pH as water, and that's neutral. So that's where you get the word neutralization. And when the base is a metal hydroxide, okay, a metal hydroxide, something like sodium hydroxide, you're going to get a water and a salt. As, as, so if you were to have, say, sodium hydroxide as a base, and you have hydrochloric acid as an acid, well, this is going to, to come apart, and you're going to get water, and then these two are going to be left over, and you're going to get salt. So some kind of a salt, sodium chloride is table salt, but other there's other types of salt, sodium chloride plus water. So you, if you have a metal hydroxide, like sodium hydroxide plus an acid, it's not just neutral. You can see that its pH would be 7 because water is pH of 7, but also it would have some salt in it. So an acid plus a base yields salt plus a water if the base is a metal hydroxide. All right, so here's a neutralization example. I've got I've got sodium hydroxide and or sorry, sodium hydroxide and uh, hydrochloric acid and it's going to make a salt plus water just like we saw. When you do its ionic equation, the H and the Cl break apart into hydrogen chloride, those are aqueous, sodium and hydroxide. Remember this is a strong a strong acid, uh, so it will break apart completely. Disso uh, ionize. This is a strong base. It completely ionizes, so you have a sodium and hydroxide. So that's all on the left. They all break apart into the water. Then you end up with sodium and chlorine here because it completely breaks apart. But then you make water, and water is not aqueous. Water is a liquid. Now water happens to be the solvent you're using, so it just kind of goes into the solvent, but it's still not dissolved in the water. It is the water. So it, it's almost like a precipitation reaction, only the water kind of just gets bigger. That's all it is. So if you cancel all your, your uh, spectator ions, the same that are on both sides, you have sodium on the left, sodium on the right, chlorine on the left, chlorine on the right. Those go away, and you end up with the reaction of an acid to a base is a proton plus a hydroxide yields water. And that's what you make. That's why... It's called a neutralization. You're neutralizing the acidity or the alkalinity and turning it into something neutral. Another type of reaction that happens with acids is um, bubbly reactions. So these are gas forming reactions. So we've seen that some, um, some metathesis uh, ones will form a precipitate, which is a solid and it falls to the bottom of the test tube. Others, like we just saw with the acid-base neutralization, can form water, and water is a liquid. Um, you can also form a gas. And so the gas doesn't fall out, it falls up. And so in the case of calcium carbonate, calcium carbonate would be like limestone or marble. You put some acid on it, it'll bubble. And it bubbles with carbon dioxide gas. It also makes some water and a salt. So a, one of the gas-forming uh, when a carbonate or bicarbonate, this is sodium bicarbonate, this is baking soda, acts with an acid. You've all done this with vinegar and baking soda, you get bubbles. You get a volcano from fourth grade. You're going to get a carbon dioxide, it's going to make some water, and you're also going to have a salt. So it's going to be a kind of a gross water at the end, a white bubbly water. And then here are the, the different types of acids that we saw, the us nitrous goes to nitric, or I'm sorry, um, nit nitrite goes to nitrous, sorry about that, nitrite goes to nitrous, uh, eight goes to ic, so phosphate goes to phosphoric, uh, perchlorate goes to perchloric, it's just a review of, of your names, which we've done before, you can go back and, and check out that video.